In Hasbin Hotel and Hell of a Boss, the term Overlord is a bit of a catch-all term. It can be used to reference anyone from the King of Hell himself, Lucifer, all the way down to an Earthborn sinner who conquers enough territory in the Pride Ring. For today's video, we will not be discussing the Overlords from any separate royal class like the Seven Princes or the Ars Goetia. Instead, our focus will be on the Earthborn sinners and even the natural-born natives of Hell who seemingly rose to power in their own unique ways. My name is Deep Cut, welcome back to Cartoon Universe, and before we jump into it, I just want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is an online game available for both PC and your mobile devices that has everything you want in a fantasy adventure. With over 600 champions to make your team, awesome stories that your characters can get wrapped up in, and options to play both against the computer as well as other players around the world. You can even make your own clan and team up with your friends to gain even more power. Elves are a staple of the fantasy industry, and now Raid Shadow Legends elves come in two flavors, classic and dark. You see, 700 years ago, elves were a united people, until Sarath tempted elves into the darkness using art and philosophy. And now, you can play as these awesome dark elves who are all just awesome mythical warriors. Like Coldheart, who isn't just cool because she's all purple, but because she's a massive help in boss fights. These awesome elves are a welcome addition to my team because my favorite part of this game is actually just collecting all of these different champions, and you have over 600 to find from the very beginning. There's an endless combination of them that can enhance the power of your team, and I just love going to the portal to summon them. You never know what you're going to get. Sign up for Raid Shadow Legends with the link in the description or the pinned comment down below, or you can even just scan the QR code right here, and you can install Raid Shadow Legends on your PC or mobile phone with special bonuses such as an epic hero Chinoru, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game. Look at this cool champion you'll get for free. You will find your extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Once you're in, just send a friend request to me. My username is CU Deep Cut, as in Cartoon Universe Deep Cut. Add me fast and let's start a clan. See you guys there. Now the term Overlord, even when excluding the royal classes of demons, can still be a bit of a broad term, something you'll see as we talk about these Overlords one by one. According to Vaggy, there were Overlords ruling over Hell for centuries, until one day, Alistair manifested. He came into Hell with never-before-seen power and immediately began to topple Overlords. We are not sure what exactly happened to these Overlords. We know their torture was broadcast over the radio waves, which is something that Alistair seemingly has control over with his power. It is likely that they are either imprisoned in some way, even if only in some pocket dimension that Alistair seems to have access to. It is also possible he had access to an angel's weapon early on, however, and used that to kill the overlords, as that is the only way we know to kill earthborn sinners who are otherwise immortal. We do not know who these overlords were, or what they ruled over, but their absence left room for new overlords to rise up in the 1900s. This started with Vox, who died when television was just starting to take off in America, and he was able to take that knowledge with him to hell and create his own industry around it. Unlike Alistair, who believes that life peaked when he was alive, and therefore thinks of anything coming after the radio as just being a passing fad, Vox believed in changing with the times, and helped use his resources to raise other overlords into positions of power, and take over new markets like the adult film industry and social media. Vox did this with the help of Valentino and Velvet, who are known collectively as the Three Vs, and have something of a surrogate family bond going, with Vox and Valentino acting as fathers to Velvet. When it comes to Alistair, he is supposedly only an overlord as a technicality, as he doesn't actually crave power. That being said, he does seem to have control over an industry similarly to the three Vs, the radio. We don't know what, if anything, that he does with his power over the radio, other than perhaps forcibly removing songs and shows that he doesn't like from the airwaves, using it as more of a personal radio instead of an industry he can exploit for money or power, but that's just me theorizing right now. Alistair doesn't seem to get along with the three Vs, particularly Vox, but he is friends with another overlord known as Rosie. So far, we only see a glimpse of her here and there in the pilot, once in Vaggie's montage about the overlords, and a small moment at the very beginning of the pilot after the annual extermination. 
There, we can see she is crossing out the name of Franklin on a sign that reads, Franklin and Rosie's Emporium. We don't know who Franklin is, but she seems happy about his passing. Rosie will have a larger appearance later in the series, and is supposed to even have a singing duet with Alistair. Despite some misconceptions about her power level early on, it seems to have been clarified that Rosie is actually one of the more powerful overlords in Hell, and is a natural-born overlord. In the background of Hasbid Hotel, we can see a lot of family photos throughout the hotel that include Charlie with her parents, the King and Queen of Hell. In some photos, we see a second family that Vizipop has confirmed to be a sort of family friend of the main family. These are natural-born Eltritch-based demons, and Charlie even dated the son of that family, Sephiathan. Vivzipop describes them as new money, with Charlie's family being traditional royalty. The two connect because of their shared power and the ways that they can help one another. Vivzipop says that if she ever gets to tell her fully planned story of about three seasons for Hasbin Hotel, she would like to do future seasons that focus more heavily on the Von Eldritch family and their lore. We get a look at a lot of overlords we don't know much about during Vaggie's history lesson about Alistair toppling over the previous overlords. One of these demons is this spider-looking demon, who we will for now call Zestiel. In a previous video, I had mistaken this character for the father of the Von Eldritch family that we just discussed, but after a closer look, these are two completely different characters, and it's hard to find any information about this one. According to various fans who were around a lot during the development stages of Hasbin Hotel and its livestreams, his name is Zestiel. We see Zestiel sitting in a room as the city begins to come out of hiding after the annual extermination in the Hasbin Hotel pilot. In this room, the windows are being opened by a female demon that many presume to be his wife. This female demon can also be seen on the opposite side of the screen in the montage featuring Alistair and the Overlords. In that same room, we can just barely make out the silhouettes of a strange demon with one eye and a weird-looking tail. This appears to be the demon at the very top of the Overlord's Pyramid during the montage, who fans currently believe to be named Zilla. She also made a quick appearance at the bar early in the pilot as well. Some fans speculate that this pyramid of overlords is actually indicative of the power level of all of these demons, with the demons at the top being the most powerful, which would make Zilla the most powerful overlord that we know of. This would make sense considering that this figure in the background that these three overlords are surrounding appears to be none other than Lucifer himself as indicated not just by his general shape, but the little apple-shaped top of his cane, something we can see more clearly in his family portrait in the hotel. As the King of Hell and the Prince of the Pride Ring, it would make sense that he would have the most powerful of the overlords in his pocket, both native Hellborn and Earthborn sinners. There are two overlords we see in the pyramid that look a bit like Stolas, leading many to believe that they are also part of the Ars Goetia. Stolas is just one prince among 72 important demons in the nobility of the Goetia, but as far as I am aware, he is one of, if not the only, owl-based demon, with each demon being pretty unique in the actual Ars Goetia that the Hasbin Hotel and Hell of a Boss Ars Goetia is based off of. That being said, the two shows have shown a lot of other owl demons that look similar to Stolas, not just in his immediate family, but as guests at their mansion, and also just in the background. So at the end of the day, we don't know whether these are natural-born sinners, native-born demons, or even royal birds like in the Ars Goetia. Before we go, I also want to talk about the idea that some overlords seem to have their title due to acquired territory. In the Hasbin Hotel Instagram accounts, we can see that Serpentius, the serpent demon trying to conquer the part of the city under the pentagram in the pilot, has something of an obsession with the overlords, and it becomes clear that the reason he's trying to take over this place is to be seen as one of them, with Cherry apparently wanting the area for herself as well as the title of Overlord as well. Neither of them are particularly naturally powerful, the way we see that a lot of Overlords are, but it helps highlight how fluid the term Overlord is within the show, as it just means really anyone who has power in any way, shape, or form that they might, whether through raw magic, acquired territory, running industries, or any combination of these three. So far, the Overlords are mostly just figures we've seen in the background, but ones we know have been developed for more important storylines later on, and if it's one thing we know about Vivzipop, it is that she really knows how to write great characters, so I'm excited to see how these characters get fleshed out once the show is in the works. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out the link down below so you can play the game as well. See you guys there!